Carney Live, presented by KMO TV and 102.7 FM. Carney Live takes a closer look at current issues and topics that matter to you. And now, here are the hosts of Carney Live Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and Stacey Bratcher. And hello and welcome to Carney Live. I'm Jim Dickerson along with Stacy Bratcher and our sports contributor, Kelly Gentry. Mike is still off. He'll be back here shortly, we hope. Mike, hope you're feeling better. And Kelly had to come over from the sports department to fill in for Mike. And <laughs> Kelly, we called him this morning. We said, hey, Mike and I are going to be in here. We need you. And he goes, but I don't know anything other than sports. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, mostly true. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be a lot of fun, I'll tell you. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit of news around Carney. For those of you who weren't there, and you're probably only one of three people who weren't, the uh, annual parade, or as it's referred to, Carney's Magical Night, took place on Saturday. Uh, Stacy and I were there, and MC the Parade had a great time with that. The award winners have been announced. And while you look at some fine video from that event, I will read these. But the best group was the Kansas City Northland Jeepers. Uh, the Christmas Spirit was the Radiant Life Church. We'll talk about that in a second because they had that really cool it was nativity amazing. thing. Uh, best business was Hampton Plumbing and their Low Boy. Best uh, youth interaction was the Beatniks Dance and Tumble. Most unique was the Kearney Parks and Recreation with their pickle mania. They were promoting the new pickleball courts. Yeah. Never seen so many big pickles in my <laughs> life. <laughs> yep. Best float was the Frick family. Uh, they had Christmas Lane. That was actually pretty neat. And then Light em Up with Sean Presley with the Christmas Camaro. And I will say, on the Light em Up, it was kind of tough, Stacy, because the Jeepers... The Jeeps um, were pretty impressive. Yeah, they had like 800 Jeeps yes. out there, and they were all lit up. And I saw someone on the Facebook page um, asked, how do you do it? <laughs> and one of the Jeep people said, we have a plug. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. That was one of my neighbors, actually. There you go. So, uh, Way to, to dime them out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did an awesome job with that. Uh, we've went the last couple of years, and it's just such a really cool event down there for Christmas. I dropped my daughter off, and then I was able to watch the broadcast. So super job for you guys. Well, we really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun with yeah, it. And I will say a shout out to Kurt Hamilton. Yes. He does a great job with that. And his whole crew. Yeah, and it, uh, all the people who were involved, and it gets bigger and better every year. Yes. So this year it was uh, good. And not only, I mean, it's it it's like everything down there runs like clockwork. You, yeah, you don't this hear, year it really you, did. You, you never hear a whole lot of complaints. I mean, let's be honest, someone's always going to complain, but <laughs> Mike's not here, so <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Mike. Um, but uh, it, the whole parade ran really, really smooth. I yes. mean, it was sometimes with parades, you get these deals where there's like a float goes by. And 12 minutes later, another flight <laughs> right. goes by. Yeah. No, there weren't and any then major some gaps. car slides into the parade that isn't supposed to be yeah. there. <laughs> you know, all that. There was so, none of that this year. No, they did a great job with it. So, Kurt, uh, great job yes. as usual. I know you're on to other things now, but uh, it was really fun doing it. And uh, hopefully, they'll invite us back next year. If you don't see us, well, you know where that went south. <laughs> um, and the fireworks were amazing. The too. fireworks were Those, good. Um, you could see them from almost anywhere in town. Uh, like where? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe the Where did you watch the town? town? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I'll put him on the spot for a second. Let's go over to Brian Watts over in the producer's booth. And there's Brian right yep. there. Brian. Brian, maybe you could talk to us for a second. Where did you see the fireworks from? <laughs> I, well, I was with you and Stacy, so I guess uh, I saw them the same place you did. Where might that have been? <laughs> well... The west it's side a, of town? The west side of town at our <laughs> usual meeting place, Stables. There you go. So, yeah, That's it, was, right. it was great. Watching. We had to judge we the, did. the we parade had. and name the winners, and so we, we did it at Stables while watching the fireworks. I was going to yep. say, so while the rest, rest of the people in Stables were having fun, we were working. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> that it's a mm. tough job. Somebody's got to do it. Makes That's us right, feel yeah. better about that. <laughs> but it was so that. fun driving from uh, City Hall two stables and passing all of the people and the families that were out 
walking all over downtown, going to all the different merchants and different spots along the way, um, whether it was the Christmas train or writing letters to Santa or actually visiting Santa. The reindeer. Go going in to see the reindeer <laughs> or at the, fire, the old firehouse. I mean, it just was, it truly was a magical night. It was so much fun. And Kurt put that all together. <laughs> all by himself. And his <laughs> staff or his crew. And I will say this while we're on Kurt, and I know we got to get moving, but uh, uh, what Kurt has done, for those of you who aren't familiar with the whole thing they've got going over there, it started off, he's only been over there three, three years, half, am I four, right? Yeah. And uh, yep. what he's done and the amount of time and built it up and, and not just the magical night, but they do stuff all year long. Yes. He has take so, taken something that was really nothing more than a kind of a side thought, kind of a neat thing to have over yep. there. And it is now clearly a fixture and a staple in the whole Kearney right. community all year long. So if you get a chance, uh, shout out to Kurt. Great job over well, there. When we say Kurt, we mean Kearney Enrichment Council. Correct. So look up Kearney Enrichment <coughs> Council. They've got a major campaign, uh, capital campaign going on right now. They could use your support. But they do. They do so much for this community from young ages all the way up to our senior citizens. They provide enrichment for our community, and they take it seriously. And, yeah, Brian was trying to get me to go over there and take part in the dance for the old people. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Well, I want to go. I didn't want to go over there and break a hip or something. <laughs> old people. Was that 80s music then? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> wow. Ouch. That's yeah. classic. That hurts. <laughs> classic that a hurts lot. a lot. When we come back, two Democrats are filing for some gun legislation that will stop crime immediately. We're going to talk about it when we come back. You're watching Carney Live. Stay with us. There's something for everyone at the Kearney Enrichment Council. Spark Studios after school programs at the old firehouse use STEAM based activities to help kids learn, create, and find new hobbies and skills. The Enrichment Council supports our senior community with fun activities and necessary services at the Kearney Senior Center. All of Kearney comes out for our festivals, concerts, farmers markets, movies in the park, parades, and much more. The Kearney Enrichment Council. 106 South Jefferson Street in Kearney, 816-635-0566. Improve quality of life, find your place, build a better future in Kearney. I am not sure, but I think I heard Brian say whoops. whoops. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the break. That reminded me of a show I watched this weekend where there's a character called Glitch. It's Mr. Glitch, and we just had a glitch. Oh. <laughs> the funny thing is, bit. for those of you who watch the show, happened. that's Brian's first one of the year. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> and the last one, I hope. <laughs> we almost made it, too. Today is, what, the 13th or right. something like that? Um, I've got to read this first intro because this, this was foist upon me because... Um, <laughs> Mike isn't here, but he I think this was Mike's story. But anyway, on Thursday, December 1st, Senator Brian Williams, um, a Democrat from University City, pre-filed legislation to help community, protect communities from gun violence by reinstating the requirements needed to obtain a concealed and carry firearm. Senate uh, Stephen Roberts, St. Louis, pre-filed legislation that would make it unlawful for a minor to possess a concealed firearm firearm or handgun. Okay, so this one's easy. <laughs> <laughs> All these laws make no point if you're not going to enforce them. That's uh -huh. number one. Number two, uh, the, the, as, as many people know, I spent many years in law enforcement and the people that we had problems with as it relates to gun violence were not the lawful citizens. Mm -hmm. The people who have the guns were people who obtained them unlawfully anyway. 
So well, the people committing the crimes with the guns. Yeah, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> yeah. But the people who committed the crime, clarification committed gun crime. <laughs> thanks for saving me. <laughs> <laughs> the people who committed gun crime were doing it illegal anyway. I don't know where we got into this thing that it's like a fairyland where, well, they won't do it if, if it's illegal because right. clearly they do. Yeah. And now with crime out of control all across the country, you think that doing another thing of legislation is going to mm -hmm. magically stop crime? It's right. not. It is not going to do it. And Stacy, your husband yeah. is in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have had this discussion. Oh, many times. This is one of his favorite topics. And um, rather than debating it with people, uh, he'll just ask a simple question. So, Kelly, what law can we create that stops murders? Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> we already have that law. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, even on this one, it's I thought, unlawful is this to murder. not a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even on this, I was like reinstating. Is that like a strongly worded, um, yeah, you know, strongly, strongly worded, worded letter? letter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I hear I hear what you're saying, and and uh, like like you were saying here too. It's like, well, what impact does that have to reinstate something? You know, it's like, is that not? Well, the funny thing is, so as it relates to the concealed, uh, the carry, and all that, I remember when that first passed several years ago. There were a lot of people who were like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the Wild West. People are going to be dying right and left and all that sort of thing. Well, the problem is people are dying right and left, but it's not because of this right. legislation. Yeah. It's the same criminal element that e existed beforehand. What That's you right. are starting to see is you're start, starting to see a lot more store owners, um, people who are starting to fight back. And mm -hmm. although I realize within the public media we don't like to talk about that because that doesn't really go where we want to go, um, the fact of the matter is the open carry and when they got rid of the concealed permit thing, um, mm -hmm. there was not a spike in crime as it related to that. It was the criminal element, which goes back to the original thing. If you're not going to enforce the law, right. it doesn't matter. It's, it's almost like the law doesn't exist. Agreed. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but we already have the laws. We need to enforce them. We need to allow our law enforcement to do their jobs. And our judges and our lawyers need to enforce, need to the, law. enforce the law, use the law as it was intended, and, and not let these people, no, don't just slap them, don't just give them a little spank and push them up. No, there needs to, but just like with raising a child, there has to be consequences to your actions. Well, and I think when you said, you know, I don't know what the answer is, I think you said the answer. Enforce <laughs> the law. That's the simple well, of it. Well, you said the answer. The problem is, is every time someone, you know, everybody's like, well, they didn't mean it. And, they, no. you know, we go through all this no. rigmarole. But the fact of the matter is you enforce the law. Um, That's right. My other favorite part on here is make it unlawful for a minor to mm -hmm. possess a concealed firearm or handgun. That's what I was going to ask, is that... Isn't that already? Well, uh, that... Oh. You can't purchase one, I know that, you, until you're... But do you think they're going to... If they're going to do it... So I've always yeah. said this. If you're going to be part of the criminal element... You're going to find You're going to be part of the criminal element. Yes. And if... So here's a quick story, because I know how everybody loves my stories. Yeah, great stories. <laughs> a quick story... By Jim Dickerson. <laughs> <laughs> when I was working with, uh, I was working with some guys that were with the uh, English uh, Scotland Yard protection detail, mm -hmm. and it was oh, really yeah. interesting talking to them. Now this was back in the '90s, I'd say, and we were talking about the problems we had with gun violence. Mm -hmm. Now back then, um, the London Bobbies and whatnot, they didn't carry guns, That's and right. they have very strict gun mm -hmm. laws. They and do. here's what they said. They said to me, I would prefer to be in the situation you're in than we are because what their criminal element does is re goes to bombs. They blow stuff up. So the point was, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. your criminal element find a, will find a way. Yes. But where he, and this is a weird way to, to reference it, but what he said was, when you have somebody who shoots somebody, they shoot one person. He goes, we have people who blow up bombs and kill multiple people all at one time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that people, and this is a problem they had. I don't know if they have this problem as much now. Um, but someone would put a bomb somewhere 
and it didn't go off when it was supposed to. It got left there, and it would go off years later when mm -hmm. somebody was mm -hmm. doing construction oh, or whatever wow. the case may be. So the point of that is if, you, if you're one of those people, you want to take away all guns, all guns, effective tomorrow, will just disappear. I don't know how you would do that, but uh, whatever. <laughs> well. I guarantee the people are going to go out. They're going to go start making these homemade grenades, mm -hmm. the, you know, like the dudes did yep. in Boston. You're going to take a, what, they use a pressure oh, cooker. Pressure cooker, and, yeah, mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. marathon. and yeah. The criminal element will find a way. That's so, right. That's right. And it's interesting they always focus on guns because guns aren't the only tool used in crime or in murders. There's, there's bats and pipes and knives and vehicles. I was going to say, what, what did the guy use in Wisconsin last year? Wasn't that Wisconsin where he drove through a parade? Yeah. He used a car. Should yeah. we ban cars? And there are more, actually, like Cain there and Abel are used more, a rock or something, yeah, didn't he? There, there are more vehicular assaults than you ever would mm -hmm. imagine in your life. People use cars against other people. Yeah. Because if someone it's a wants big, to harm or kill someone, they're going to find a way to do it. And I'm not advocating this, so don't go write letters <laughs> and emails. But you go back to the days, the old days, when if you stole something, what'd they do? They chopped your hand off. Yeah, yeah. That's called a deterrent. <laughs> and a lot of people, now I'm not advocating we go start chopping right. hands off. We've evolved. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Could you imagine the senator? Yeah. <laughs> I'm introducing legislation. But the point is, if there's no deterrent, it's just like Stacy right. said with your kids. If there's no deterrent to it, you're going to keep doing it. And you have the kid, you know how you see the kid in the grocery store who's throwing a temper tantrum mm -hmm. and just keeps going and keeps going. And yeah. mom is like, oh, it's okay. Nobody cares. That kid's going to keep doing it because there's no deterrent. Mm -hmm. You have yeah, kids. It, Talk to me about oh, that. Oh, right, right. No, absolutely. Well, and I, I think, too, about some of the things that, um, you know, predispose this. I actually, um, the Virginia University football players that were killed, a friend of mine uh, was good friends with one of those uh, student athletes' dad. They were in the military together. They were both pilots, as a matter of fact. So, and, you know, you were taught, you know, just thinking about some of the um, emotional uh, health issues that uh, mental health issues and things like that that some young people can have um, what support systems do they have you know mm -hmm. what I mean and so like you're saying here I mean you know you don't want minors to have the access to be able to go you know, especially someone that has a mental health challenge or something like that so reinforcing you know that you know and, and the, you know what they're saying here um, you know would be very important and then also there's a big issue with mental health i mean and we're going to talk touch right. on a topic a little bit later yeah. that will that will you know address that a little bit too so yeah. so have we solved that problem brian what, yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> i didn't oh know. we're here to solve problems oh, I, oh I, I, I was not told that we they didn't tell me that right right <laughs> But my, I would have agreed to this. Just to close out, <laughs> to close out this block, I'll just say this: um, that goes nowhere. Uh, that's the most. That's borderlines on the most ridiculous thing of the month. <laughs> Stacy, I defer. <laughs> uh, well, it's your tease is next. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Mine says so, so Stacy. It You're does? Next. Oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong page. Oh, Sorry. These okay. kids today. <laughs> no, wait. I don't know where we're at. All okay. right, I'll tell you what Stacy's going to talk here, about. I'll oh, do my she's tease. Got it. Okay, it's no surprise. A new study reveals that teenage brains aged faster during the pandemic from stress and anxiety. We'll share more right after this. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. Kearney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Kearney Trust.
Family Chiropractic Center. Heal yourself. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery. Walnut Creek serves their premium wines in true farm-to-table fashion. Their grapes are grown on small vineyards in Missouri and Colorado and pressed right here in Holt, Missouri. Their locally made wine pairs with their gourmet pizza and charcuterie boards. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery. Open Thursday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. at 90 North Main Street in Holt or find them on the web at walnutcreekwine.com. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery, bringing farm to table to your glass. All right, in addition to heavily increased rates of anxiety and depression, researchers at Stanford University discovered the COVID-19 pandemic aged teenagers' brains by almost three years, according to a study published earlier this month. In the study group, or in the study, a group of seven researchers compared MRI scans taken of teenagers ages 15 to 18 before the pandemic, and then scans of the same group during the pandemic. The scans also reportedly showed structural changes in the brain and changes to the parts of the brain responsible for memory, concentration, learning, emotion, reactivity, and judgment. Experts in the study said it is still unclear how the changes will impact teens in their future, but for the time being, it serves as evidence that the mental health disorders in teens grew during the pandemic. Kelly, I know you're pretty involved in the school district. You've got kiddos of your own. What do you think about this? Yeah, whenever um, you know, I learned about this topic being covered on the show today, I did reach out to uh, Jennifer Kopp, who's the uh, Assistant Superintendent of Academic Services, and Allie Stewart, the uh, Curriculum Coordinator. And it's kind of interesting to hear the impact that we even see here locally, because we know that a lot of these kids say maybe they're eighth, ninth, tenth grade now, you know, they were, should have been in middle school during uh, that time and that, and that time is a really important transitional time for kids both academically as well as uh, socially and emotionally. And if you miss that period of time, you know, you don't have a normal experience. Um, they, um, and I think the Kearney Middle School, I've got a daughter there right now, does a tremendous job with, um, you know, it's a transitional, you're going from grade school to middle school is kind of your first uh, transitional time mm -hmm. before you get ready for junior high and high school. And so they have had to, um, the school district's done a great job with adding resources, whether it's additional math assistance, but also some of these social and emotional things that you're talking about. Teachers are spending more time sort of demonstrating as and being an example uh, of how to have a, a relationship with a peer or if there's a, I hate to say conflict, but if there's a disagreement, how do you handle those types of things? So we do have some really um, inter you know, interesting things here, even locally that we can point to that say, gosh, yeah, they're definitely, uh, whether now that we didn't talk about brain structure, <laughs> <laughs> right. but um, but yeah, I mean, and it impacts is, it impacts different age groups uh, altogether, you know, like kids, they've also seen uh, even entry scores coming in for the kindergarten uh, entry, they've seen a little bit lower, you know, uh, entry scores the last couple of years. So they, they have a lot of uh, great information. And like I said, it's not just academic, it's more, it's also social, social emotional. Yeah. Um, even things like uh, stamina and time on tasks, you know, like you're used to, you know, you have to do a certain schoolwork assignment or project for a certain period of time. They've even noticed differences with those types of things. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, dynamic, but mm -hmm. I feel confident that the school district is really, they have, they had a, as soon as I called in this morning, they had a pulse on it and they said, yeah, we have seen some of these things and that's why we're adding staff adding resources, those types of things to help address uh, for, our, for the Kearney District. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a lot of stuff um, it start to be exposed. I think what mm -hmm. the RONA did for us is it exposed a lot of weaknesses we didn't know we had. Right. Um, school kids is just one, and I think you're starting to see it develop over time. Uh, one thing is school kids now, that's the one time you start to learn, like Kelly said, how to interact, how to have mm -hmm. conversation, how to mm -hmm. agree, how to disagree, how to overcome 
adversity. <clears throat> and these kids didn't get that. They got it through a computer. They got it through mm -hmm. a phone. And when you talk about time on task, if there's nobody there, you can walk away from your computer. You can do, but you're not being taught what has to be done. So all that's going to, I think, uh, not only is it, it just starting to show up, I think you're going to start to see problems with it on down the line. Um, we exposed a lot of things because there was a lot of conversation about online learning, man, this is the way of the future and all this. And I think we learned that's not. I think we learned that's mm -hmm. not a really good way to do, to deal with kids. Um, it, they're just at that environment or that stage where you really need the one-on-one -on -one interaction. And then the weird thing, uh, the the masks, yeah. the, the lack of being able to see facial expressions and mm -hmm. all that has had a dynamic impact that we never would have dreamed of, I don't think. So I think you're going to see, I think this is just the start. I think you're going to start to see a lot of problems start to manifest themselves as we go forward. Right. Yeah, and I think, it's, I think it'll be interesting too. I know, um, and obviously being the sports guy, I mean, <clears throat> our sports teams this year have done a phenomenal job. Our community out, uh, you know, just how involved the community has been with the sports teams and other activities um, and, and the activity level with kids participating in things. I mean, kids missed that as well as did adults. I mean, I remember when we first came back to some of the other, you know, being in the gymnasium or being, at, you know, that we weren't for those couple of years, you're like, wow, I really miss this. And the kids did as well. So I, I think you're right. You know, you don't, you don't, you kind of take those things for granted until you don't have it. And then you're like, wow. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, they say one of the biggest, reported in the survey, the biggest sources of pandemic stress was the lack of social support and isolation during the lockdowns. But then they mm -hmm. noted this, which I thought was really interesting. Many children also experienced heightened anxiety over health risks and academic stress from the sudden return to school. Mm -hmm. So we had that relaxed atmosphere of learning for what was it a year or two depending on what your school district and what was happening there and then all of a sudden we returned to school and it was we didn't teach the kids how to study or how to come back to school it just was wham we're back and you're expected to catch up and we didn't ease them and teach them along into that i thought that was an interesting note it is and and you think about it just and i'll i mean i'll even say this from an adult standpoint a lot of my work was done remote for that mm -hmm. period of time as well and i remember it was so strange going to a meeting an in-person meeting and meeting a lot of people that I had never met, I'd been working with them for almost two years. And just, you know, just, I mean, even for adults. So, and, you know, on the uh, kids at home, uh, you know, the at home education part, there's a lot of variability there, right? I mean, because some kids, you know, just based on what your dynamic is at your home, did you have support? Someone sort right. of making you, hey, I have to do this. Yeah. And um, I, I know that, uh, you know, Jennifer and Allie were even saying, you know, gosh, the, uh, online, uh, you know, social media, things like that ended up filling a lot of kids' times if they didn't have, you know, a good structure, structural environment around them during that uh, hybrid thank, learning. Thank God for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Turns out it's not a great babysitter. <clears throat> right? Yeah, well, the, I, I think the other thing is, is it started to manis, manifest itself in kids who are graduating from high school and then starting into the workforce. And what mm -hmm. they're starting to find is that um, there is a tremendous increase in kids who, number one, either because of just out and out fear or laziness or a combination of both, at any moment's notice, they'll call in sick and say, I can't come in today. So in the workplace, hmm. the, uh, what they found is or what they're finding is, you know, there's no dedication to coming in. So you have work employers who are like, we have to have 50 people for 30 positions because half of them will call in sick just because some of them because something else came up something because some of them because they are truly fearful that if I have a sniffle I you know we, we came into this thing where you don't want to expose yourself to anybody mm -hmm. which there comes a point where you I mean yeah if you're deathly ill don't go in and spread it to everybody else but right. if you right. find yourself and you go <coughs> That's probably not <laughs> the reason to not show up. And that's where you get that deal where, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the, I think it was an Olive Garden <laughs> manager. She she was the manager of this Olive, I think it was Olive Garden, 
Um, she was the manager of an establishment, and <laughs> her employees weren't showing up. And they were all saying, well, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. So she said, if you're sick, you need to bring in a doctor's note. And if your dog died, you need to bring in the dead dog. That's where she got in trouble. If she hadn't said that part, it was pretty good. The, the, so the dead dog part. But you see where she's going. Her frustration was at an all-time high because no one will show up. And yeah. she's like, prove to me that what you're saying is true. She kind of got in trouble for that. But be that as it may. Yeah. But I, I, I just think, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to see so much more. Um, oh, yeah. Coming up. Yeah, they say around right now, 60% of children have a recent history, <clears throat> excuse me, of self-injury or su suicidal ideation. And I think we're starting to see a lot of that play out um, in our communities. And they also don't know um, the accelerated changes in the brain age had only been found at this point in children who experienced chronic adversity like violence, neglect, family dysfunction or accommodation. So they're comparing what we went through with COVID-19 to ex chronic adversity like violence, really? neglect, and dysfunction. Yeah, I think we're going to find a whole bunch more. And coming up next, we've all heard about the Twitter files. That'll kind of play into what we're talking about here. And how does the Twitter files and all that affect us here locally? And some of the stuff we've already talked about. Stay with us, Carney Live. Next segment coming up next. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery. Walnut Creek serves their premium wines in true farm-to-table fashion. Their grapes are grown on small vineyards in Missouri and Colorado and pressed right here in Holt, Missouri. Their locally made wine pairs with their gourmet pizza and charcuterie boards. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery. Open Thursday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. at 90 North Main Street in Holt or find them on the web at walnutcreekwine.com. Walnut Creek Vineyard and Winery, bringing farm to table to your glass. You value choices when it comes to the products and services you bring into your home. That's why Platte Clay Electric Cooperative gives you control over the energy you use. PCEC offers members ways to save with energy efficiency rebates and demand billing. You even have the power to choose the resources used to produce your power. To learn more, visit www.pcec.coop slash power. Black Clay Electric Cooperative, your power, your way. Migraine headache, the throbbing in your temples, the pounding in your forehead, extreme sensitivity to light and sound. Your neck feels so tight it could snap off. Oh, the debilitating pain. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Strathman with Kearney Family Chiropractic Center, and I've been practicing chiropractic health in Kearney for over 22 years. When you come to see me, I identify what's wrong and determine if I can help you. If I can, I create your personalized plan for relief. When you have pain, you can make an appointment by calling 816-628-6738, or you can visit the office at 301 South Platte Clay Way, Suite B in Kearney. Carney Family Chiropractic Center. Heal yourself. Online banking at Carney Trust Company gives you 24-7 access to your checking, savings, money markets, CDs, and loan accounts. You can access your accounts anytime from your home, office, and mobile devices. Online banking with Carney Trust combines convenience and flexibility to bank on your own terms. Kearney Trust Company is a partner for success with two locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Kearney Trust Company. Banking you can trust. Member FDIC.
And welcome back to Carney Live. For those of you who have been following the Twitter files, uh, you all know that Elon Musk purchased Twitter and there was a big controversy around that. And then Elon, as he got in there, started to find a bunch of information about how certain topics were censored and certain information was filtered out. Also found out that certain people were banned for Twitter because of their political views. And there is great consternation, co that word, that um, <laughs> it may have impacted the election as well as other information, Hunter Biden's laptop and all that sort of thing. There's also now, it's been released in four separate things that it contains emails, conversations, and all that sort of thing. So the people who were like, oh, that didn't happen or it's not real, now the actual documents are out there. How does that affect us here locally? And this plays right into what Kelly was talking about and also what Stacy was talking about in that. We do know that Twitter's not the only one that shadow bans and censors and all that sort of thing. And in fact, we've talked about it right here on this program. We have analytics that absolutely we've been watching for a couple of years. Really started just around COVID. It's when we started to notice it. But in our stories here, both online videos and everything else, there's certain words we can say, there's certain topics, and our analytics will drop right off the face of the earth. And I'm going to tell you right now, and here's where this show is going to crash. <laughs> if we mention Hunter Biden's laptop, it crashes. If we mention COVID uh, masking, anything in a negative way, it crashes. And so what we did was we actually did an experiment a couple of years ago when we used to do the video news um, we would do stories and we would leave certain words in and leave certain words out. And then we'd duplicate the story maybe the next week. It's the same story. And then look at the analytical change. And it was amazing. And we could actually see when certain words were inserted into the stories what happened. That's exactly what they're finding in the Twitter files, which tells you that it is not just some national thing that doesn't affect anything. It affects everybody. And when it affects us here on a local carny level, that's mm -hmm. something. But yeah. Kelly and I were talking a little bit before the show, and Kelly, we talked about the algorithms and all that sort of thing. And the thing that strikes me is there's a lot of people who know how this works, but there's a lot of people who've never heard of it and don't understand. And you were talking a little bit about the algorithms and what, how that plays into what you see. <coughs> Yeah, and I think it's uh, regardless of uh, political or whatever ever topic that you're talking about, these algorithms, um, you know, what I was watching a documentary that talked about how the algorithms will actually feed you the information that you are wanting to seek out. So if there's a certain topic, it's going to feed you more of that because their goal, and this comes from the engineers at some of the social media companies, really is to keep you on their platform, whether it's Twitter or whatever it is. So their goal is to keep you so that if there's a topic that you're going to be more interested in, spend more time in, you're going to get more of that information. But the counter to that is, um, and of course it comes out in political views, but other things as well, you're only seeing that side of it. You're never seeing the other side. So one of the things that this documentary talked about was just that that can c create more of a division amongst people regardless of what topic mm. that you're talking about because you're only seeing one side of it because of the way these algorithms work. So it was really, uh, really eye-opening to me, to be honest with you. And then, you know, we were talking about kids and spending a lot of time on social media. You know, it's something that I definitely wanted to communicate to my oldest, who's 20 years old in college, like, hey, you know, don't believe all of this because you're just going to be getting one side of it. So. Well, and we talk a little bit, and this goes back to Stacy's story. We were talking a little bit about ch children's brains and all that sort of thing. Now we've got this information that came out. Kids are having nightmares and suicidal thoughts over climate change because that's all they see. They're fed this constantly, constantly, constantly. But the fact of the matter is they're not being fed anything else. And if you fed that to me and that's all I knew, I mean, you've got to look at it from the standpoint of that's all they know. They don't know anything else. Right. Y you might be faced with, well, what is there to live for? Well, that's true. When you they, they have studies on that, that when you are constantly told something negative, you eventually believe it. And then when you're told something positive, you, you can't. Your brain has been programmed to believe the negative, so you can't believe the positive. And that's exactly what these platforms are doing. Um, 
to our youth and to many adults yeah. that, mm. that choose to, to <clears throat> not, you know, we're always talking on the show, you've got to do your research. You've got to look at both sides and figure this out mm -hmm. for yourself and do some critical thinking. But when you rely on social media platforms for all of your information, you, they know you and they're only going to give you what you want to see. And once mm -hmm. you, kind of like Stacy talked about, once, or not Stacy, you're Kelly. You're Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I what, get that a lot. What, what Kelly <laughs> talked about, <laughs> the, once you get fed something, then it starts to feed on the, uh, the logistics and the algorithms pick up on that and it just mm -hmm. keeps feeding mm -hmm. you that stuff. Yeah. Right. And so, so for those of you who are out there and are worried about climate change, right. let me give you something to be happy about. Number one, Christmas is just around the That's corner. That's right. Uh, you know, AOC had her little blockbuster <laughs> movie on climate change, and it averaged $80 per theater is the revenue they got. I'll repeat that. $80 per theater. I'm going to say they spent more than $80 to get the employees in there, but I digress. When we were kids, the three of us, Leonard Nimoy had a special, Spock, <laughs> But anyway, he had a special, and I, if I remember right, it was on the ice, uh, the ice caps were coming down, and they were just going to destroy the United States, and we were all going to die. They had a whole special and all this yeah. sort of thing. Never happened. Then, yeah. remember the 90s? Hairspray? Hairspray is destroying, <laughs> destroying the ozone. I don't know ozone. a lot about hairspray, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's okay because I, I look at you and I'm like, that's me in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have much going for me left either. But, um, but it was hairspray. It, we were destroying the ozone and we we're all yeah. going to die of, of hairspray, I guess, or hairspray. Yeah. Now it's climate change. And the funny thing is, if you do your research and go look at certain things, and we've talked about this before, we had a scientist on the show and we were talking about a lot of these climate change people are talking about the last 50 years, 75 years, and the scientists said, yes, but the Earth is billions of years. Right. And it goes through all these cycles. cycles. And this is nothing new. And yes, there are variations in there, but we're all going to be okay. Yes. Uh, well, we not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but most of us will be okay. But um, going back to the algorithms, yep. I, I don't... Yes, we know this is going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the funny thing, though. Like you said, Stacy, there are people who have, this is either the first they've heard of it or they have not heard of it because a lot of it's still being censored. They're, they're not really, this is not a big, yeah. every, it's like, I don't know if we want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who just don't know. And to Stacy's point, go do your research. And I'm not saying go look at, some specific channel. I'm going to say right. generically, go yes. mm -hmm. research. Go research algorithms. Go look up all that. But um, yeah. all these companies are driving people into forced trains of thought, and that's a bad thing. Bad yeah. thing. Yeah, because sometimes you can hear the same story by two different, I'll say, news outlets or two different outlets, and it's the same story with entirely, you know, you wouldn't think it was the same right. story, right? It's like, mm -hmm. wow, this is... Uh, because sometimes there's a lot more opinion than right. fact, right? Well, and so. this demonizing of people who have an opposite opinion is just wrong. We need all opinions to make society work. And yeah. so to, to make Elon Musk the bad guy here, oh, don't believe him because he's a bad person. Well, whatever he would, whatever that, it is they try to say about him. That's so, the biggest mind yeah. boggle. See how I censored yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Because Elon was the hero. He I was. Mean, he had electric cars and yep. he had the space program. Everybody loved Elon. And then he bought Twitter and now and he's, now what don't. do they call him, Hitler? And I'm like, w w wait a minute. No. He was he was cool earlier and now not so much. So you got to watch yeah. what you're doing. People who call yeah. other people Hitler don't understand what Hitler Yeah, did. that's a whole yeah. other topic. We could go sorry. on for an hour and a half on that. That's <laughs> yeah. just. I, sorry, not sorry. Save that one for Mike. There yeah. Let back, me write right? that down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, I. Um, so the the thing of it is is that it, there is now, it has gotten so bad there is now a commercial I think it was on during Monday Night Football, and it's about how uh, people used to get together and talk and now they mm. can't and now family dinners are turned into yes. arguments. Have you seen yes, that commercial? Yes, I have. And I'm like, we've come to this. We have to. We have a commercial now that oh. that talks about how to get along with people or how to. <laughs> 
have a conversation and that well and that's what we were talking about with some of the grade school and middle school that's what we that yeah. kind of goes back to our school topic we were talking about earlier too like you said if you haven't had to experience some adversity or dealing with other people in those social to, settings especially right. the middle school um yeah so that ties right in with that mm -hmm. well I, I think so the first thing i think you need to do and a lot of there's a lot of people who and I think it's because of the social media, because you, you can get on, you can be a keyboard warrior, and there is a lot of times in oh. your mind, there's no, there's no, you, you can't lose because I said it, therefore it is. The problem is there's a lot of people who found out the hard way, these companies, if you're in line for a, a really good job, and then they go back and go, well, we saw your social media stuff. Right. I know a lot of people... Yeah who have lost out on some very good jobs because mm -hmm. of stuff they've posted on social media because they thought there was no recourse to it. But the thing is, you get into this social media trap, the algorithms play to your what you believe, right. mm -hmm. therefore you believe nothing else, and you yeah. don't know how to face adversity. If you're a right. kid, if you're a child, you don't know how to face adversity. What happens when you go to that first job interview and it doesn't go well? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, I mean, yeah. how do you deal with kids all the time? Yours have grown. Almost. Well, yeah, I don't have, I only have adults now. Yeah. I like the way, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she had to think about it. I do yeah, have to yeah. think. Well, they're still at home mooching off me, well, so. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, your, ki your kids are younger. I mean, as a parent, where do you, how do you, like, say, hey, you've got to look at all this stuff and. Yeah, I know one of the things that, um, and, and it gets talked about a lot in the schools as well, you know, as well as a lot of parents, uh, you know, the resiliency. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be able, you know, not everything's going to go your way, right? I mean, you're going to have obstacles that you have to uh, yeah. get through. And the good news, and one of the things I like about sports is it can be a safe place to kind of learn some of those lessons right. uh, that hopefully you'll be able to use later in life, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I set goals for myself? How do I work with teams? You know, how how am I still a good team member even though I'm not getting as much playing time as this person or those types of things. Right. So this is one of the things that I really uh, appreciate about sports mm -hmm. teams or other activities. It doesn't have to be sports, but other extracurricular things where you are kind of forced to deal with some of those things and, and you know, get some resiliency under your belt, right. belt and, and something that's not really going to impact you a lot, you know, when you get older. So, um, yeah, so I try to look for opportunities like that, and as I'm sure most parents do. And uh, I've always told my kids, I'm like, you know, it's, it's, you can learn lessons from other, thi the other things that you mm -hmm. see happen. You, you don't have to have it happen to you to learn that lesson, right? Yeah. So, I love that you used resiliency, Kelly. Um, my husband's a, a school resource officer. That's right. And he was doing lessons on resiliency. And one of his favorite stories is after giving a resiliency lesson at the middle school level, the kiddos afterward would come up to him and thank him for sharing that information with them, that this was something new that they had never heard of, really? that, that it That's was really okay. Cool. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I yeah. will say the best things that have happened to me are as following a bad thing happening. Right. In other words, yeah. right. I may have been shooting for this, and I really, really wanted this, and I wanted to do this, and it didn't quite work out. But then I ended up over here, which was far right. better than what I would have been doing over here. I've yeah. had that happen yeah. several times too, and it's I, yeah. and I tell younger people, um, it, it's hard when you're going through something it like is. that because you maybe don't have that experience, you know. So it feels like oh, this is the end of the end of the world. But really, when you look back on it, I think a, a lot of us, as you're an adult, you've seen oh gosh, you know, this really worked out. That's for what's where they best. say, That's get right. up, rub some dirt on it, and it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> Final thoughts coming up next. There's something for everyone at the Kearney Enrichment Council. Spark Studios after school programs at the old firehouse use steam based activities to help kids learn, create and find new hobbies and skills. The Enrichment Council supports our senior community with fun activities and necessary services at the Kearney Senior Center. All of Kearney comes out for our festivals, concerts, farmers markets, movies in the park, parades, and much more. The Kearney Enrichment Council, 
106 South Jefferson Street in Kearney, 816-635-0566. Improve quality of life, find your place, build a better future in Kearney. And welcome back to Final Thoughts, Stacy. All right, are you looking for a last minute Christmas gift? I've got the perfect place for you to go for anybody on your list, and I'm serious about this. Go to the Porter's Building Centers. They are having a huge one day sale this Saturday with 17% off store-wide and another 50% off remaining Christmas items. Tools, grills, Hallmark, and more. It's happening this Saturday, December 17th. Uh, they came to the Chamber Luncheon and shared some of their products at our, our Favorite Things Luncheon, and they have some really cool products that you would not believe, and for both men and women, and just go, get your discount, and enjoy, and buy some gifts. Well, the problem <laughs> I have with that is I need to buy some stuff for um, Brian, and he said what he really wants is socks and underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you never I mean, know I'm, what you I'm might I'm find at not, Porter's yeah. Building Center. <laughs> you never so, know. So, little shout out. Kent, could you tell me what aisle to go in? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly April. Gentry. Yeah, so my uh, final thought has to do with an event that was held at Kearney High School this past Monday. It was the Special Olympics Jam, which is an event that we have done for several years at Kearney, but due to COVID and other circumstances, this was, I think we hadn't had it for two or three years. Um, had the opportunity to be one of the public address announcers there, uh, just uh, supporting these kids. And it's a great event. You can't walk out of there without a full heart and a smile on your face. Uh, you can see the pictures there. Uh, the varsity athletes and coaching staff actually worked with the kids. Uh, the Special Olympians uh, for several weeks coming up to the event and then uh, they were able to play a game. They, it was the full show. You had cheerleaders, dance, uh, the crowd, you know, we had the PA going. And so it was just, it's a, it's a wonderful event that Kearney High School uh, put on this, uh, this year. And I will say Gigi Lear, Aaron, uh, Mrs. Aaron Dre, uh, I mean, they put a lot of time and effort into all of these Special Olympic sports, whether it's basketball, track, all the different opportunities. So uh, well done. I love that, that's wonderful. Uh, th that's really cool. And uh, I wanted to say, too, uh, over on the sports department, you guys, um, for those of you who haven't noticed it over there, uh, the basketball coverage with Kelly and Andy and um, Dan. Dan uh, I even pulled in Eric. Is Yeah, and Eric was on it the other day. That is outstanding coverage if you guys have not heard it. I actually was on a trip, which was really nice, over in uh, D.C., <laughs> And I was in the car, and the guy driving goes, do you want me to put that on the radio? And I was like, well, it's, it's, it's in Kansas City, or it's in Kearney. And, but it was kind of nice. And Stacy, are you going to be okay? <laughs> She's all choked up over the last story. Um, and uh, I forgot, I don't even remember what my final thought was, so I don't have one. Um, so what do I do, Brian? Just skip it. So um, I will well, not be here next week. Hopefully Mike will be back. So uh, for me, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to everybody. It's been great. I will see you back the week after Christmas, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I'm being told yes. So, <laughs> But Kelly, thanks for uh, filling in today. My pleasure. Uh, Glad it's to good be to here. have you. Mike, get better. And uh, Stacy, anything else before we go? All right. She's trying not to die over here. <laughs> so that's good. Thanks for joining us on Carney Live. Uh, they will see you next week. I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>